Thanks to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring today's video. That's right, Toby Dog. I got a surprise for you because this day has been long coming. Earlier this spring, I built the most epic house for my livestock guardian dog, Toby. It would protect him from the weather, it had a nice, comfy, cozy straw bed, and it even had a second story where my barn cat, Pablo, could live. But then about five weeks ago, something happened. You see, we raise geese here on our farm, and one of the mother geese took over Toby Dog's house. She set up shop, and she wouldn't leave, and she kept laying eggs inside that house. Whether or not to move her was something I was very conflicted about. On one hand, Yes, this was my dog Toby's house and I shouldn't let the geese take over his stuff But on the other hand now that the weather was warming up He's the type of dog who doesn't really like a house And so I knew he wouldn't probably need it again until November when it starts to get really cold and the snow starts to fly So I made the decision to let the goose stay in there and try to hatch out some goslings And I think in doing that I ticked off half the internet But it's now been well over 40 days and no goslings have hatched. And so in today's video, it's time to take back my dog's house. Hey, Mother Goose. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to evict you. Out you go, come on. Out you go. Woo. So I always knew that that wasn't gonna be very hard. She's been in there for weeks, and you could actually see she's lost weight compared to a lot of the other geese. My goal was just to try to find a way to raise up some goslings inside of here. Hey, get out of there, chickens. All right, now step two is to take back the eggs. It's such a shame that this didn't produce any goslings. I was really hoping. And there were actually two different mother gooses that were in here. So you're gonna see twice the normal number of clutch of eggs that you typically have. Hey Toby, are you excited that you're getting your house back? <laughs> oh, look at this. See, this is what's known as a fairy egg. It's much smaller than a standard goose egg. It's what they start to lay when they're shutting down production. Oof, it stinks because one of these eggs cracked. Not that it hatched, but it like broke. And old eggs like that are awful. What kind of smells like Hitler's anus? I'm very nervous to find like a dead baby gosling in here. That would be very sad. Man. So yeah, that right there is an insane number of eggs. Pretty crazy, huh, buddy boy? Get out of there, car. While I finished cleaning out the goose nest, I did want to stop and take a moment to tell you guys about a documentary show I just watched the other night and I really enjoyed it. It was called Doug to the Rescue. It's all about this guy, Doug, who's a drone pilot who uses these special drones on missions to rescue wildlife stranded in the aftermath of all sorts of natural disasters, from the front lines of the Australian bushfires to coastal towns leveled by hurricanes. Like in each episode, he uses a drone to try to save an animal. It's such a great watch and it's such a great show. I really enjoyed it. And you can watch Doug to the Rescue 2 only on Curiosity Stream, today's video sponsor. Curiosity Stream is a subscription-based streaming service that's like Netflix for nerds. Curiosity Stream has thousands of streamable documentaries and non-fiction TV shows on topics like history, nature, science, food, technology, travel, and more. Curiosity Stream offers award-winning exclusives by legendary filmmakers as well as original program you can get stream to any device anywhere. To sign up for Curiosity Stream, use the code GOLDSHAW and click on the link down below in the description of this video and you can get Curiosity Stream for $14.99 for the entire year. And now come with me as I go break some disgusting eggs. So whenever I clear out a nest, I usually will take a little time to 
smash open each egg that I've pulled out. What I'm looking for is embryo development to see how far along they were, see what happened, see if they were even fertile. I pulled out about 30-ish eggs from the nest, so that was 30 eggs between two geese, which is, you know, maybe a little high, but not abnormal. What I found is that pretty much every egg was fertile. I put my fertility rate at about 90%, which is very much on par to what I've found with the, the eggs that have been hatching in the incubator. But these eggs weren't actually all that developed, you know? As I looked at it, I don't think there was any embryo that was, say, more than 20 days in development. There were a lot of eggs that were like rotten, so you could hear them explode, and they would just make this awful smell and noise. It's kind of grisly looking through these eggs, but it is a necessary step to help you get better for the future. Release the quacking! <laughs> No, 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 no. You guys get out of here. Out you go. <laughs> now that I got the goose out, I'm not gonna let those guys try to colonize this place. Actually, the fact of the matter is, the chickens have been trying to take over the second floor lately. But I have a plan to keep everybody out. Don't worry, pal, it's only temporary. So one angry viewer actually sent me this sign to put on the goose house, dog house. I thought it was pretty darn funny. <laughs> I'll use it to help board up the building. We don't want any chickens hanging out up here, huh? There we go. Boarded up good and proper. That should work. Hey Toby, are you going to be able to wait this out for a couple of weeks? Of course, that's not the only place that the geese can go. What are you guys doing in there, huh? Now this is merely a temporary solution for my problem. In a future video, I will solve this permanently and figure out a way to keep Toby's house protected from all the birds so that they don't invade him in the future. But before I can do that, I've got a second goose problem I gotta deal with. There are goose nests in there too. You see, I've got a mother goose here and a mother goose there. This mother goose should be pretty easy to get off. She also doesn't have any eggs underneath her, so I'm just gonna try to disrupt her nest and get her out. It's okay, mother goose, it's okay. Oh my lord. I would not believe this if I wasn't seeing it from my own eyes. Even though she's never had a real egg underneath her in that nest, there's a little baby gosling right there. Hey, mama. You see it? You guys see that gosling? It's like right there, tucked right under her wing, sleeping. Okay. <clears throat> it clearly makes no sense to kick her out of her nest. I'm actually amazed that she's got a little one right underneath her. I don't know where it came from. It must have come from this mother goose right here. Can I check it underneath you? Huh. It looks like maybe her eggs are hatching under there? I'm not going to disrupt this whole scene just because I can clearly see there's one gosling underneath that mother goose and then she's the one who's got the live eggs, so maybe she's about to hatch out the other ones. In this situation, I'm not gonna intervene at all, and I'm just gonna let both of these mother gooses do their things for the next couple of days. 
I know, you guys are just trying to be protective. I'm just gonna leave some food. You're Justin Finch Fleshley. Take it easy on me, man. I'm just trying to leave some food and water here for the little one. <laughs> Come on, you guys, get out of here. And chicken, you get out of here too. This might be an unpopular choice with the rest of the geese, but I'm gonna actually close these two mother geese off inside this goose house. I'm leaving them with food and water, but just probably for a day or two, I wanna let the mother and the baby or babies hatch without the disruption of the other geese around the flock. Come on, Mr. Toby Dog. Were you two guys fighting right there? That gander and General Washington were definitely mixing it up. Were you having a Tilly? Maybe a Donnybrook? So I did have a couple of other sets of baby animals I wanted to share with you guys. And the first batch are actually with our weird chickens. So as I think you guys saw in a previous video, they were just starting to hatch out some silky babies in here. And I have good news for you guys. They both have some babies underneath them. So Linda here, I think she has one underneath her. And I think Rosie actually has three. I've had food and water stashed in here. They seem pretty happy and healthy. I don't know if I can coax her to let them out or not. They were out yesterday afternoon. Pretty cool to see. Can I just do a wellness check on your little ones there, sweetie? Yeah, you can see there's three of them under her. There's that one, that one, and see that one with the beak poking out? They're doing really good. And then underneath Linda here. I think there's like only one underneath Linda. She's not letting it up, so. I don't want to disturb them too much, you know? But I'm really excited. So we at least have four silky chicks in the making here. And then the last set of younglings that I have here on the farm is actually going to require me to take you into the barn here. Let's go see how they're doing. Hey, little ones. How's it going, guys? That's what I got for you. Fresh greens. Yeah, so these are our three goslings that we have left. You know, we actually hatched out a bunch of them, but uh, these are the three remaining. And I gotta say, it's gotta take a pretty good offer from somebody to wanna buy one of these guys for me to wanna break up this trio because it is just so adorable watching them. So specifically we have this gosling here on the far left. This one is, I think, a buff goose. So it's like the offspring of Bruce the Goose. Then we have this interesting Toulouse, maybe Toulouse cross. And then this one, this is our miracle goose. She's definitely like a either Toulouse Emden or Emden Pilgrim cross. And uh, you know, this is the one that was attacked by the mother goose that you saw actually over in the goose house. I really thought she was dead, but um, but as time has gone on, definitely been a case of resilient young and, and he or she, or, I mean, they have 
definitely bounce back in a big, big way. It's really exciting to see. I will admit I have way more brooder space than I actually need for these three little guys, but that's okay. I have another batch of goslings that are hatching next week and I'll probably just throw them in with these folks. You know, to have all this new life here on the farm, it really is a special time and it, and it definitely puts a spring in your step. If you guys want to see how things looked here on the farm in years past, check out the video over on the left hand side of the screen. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Thanks for watching everybody.